Please remain standing as Amazing Grace Oaks sings our national anthem. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs burst still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the Chaplain Ricardo Quintana from the Ventura Police Department will now give the invocation. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, today we take time to recognize the bravery, character, and ultimate sacrifice of officers who have given their lives for the safety and well-being of all who live in this great county. We ask that you would place your blessing over all that is said and done during this ceremony. As we grieve their loss, may we receive your grace to bear the memories of their lives. May the families, friends, and comrades of each officer receive your com comfort and love as they continue to miss their loved ones. Help us never forget the depth of character, unquestionable commitment, and legacy these officers have exampled and left us with. It is in these moments that we remember the words of Jesus who said, there's no greater love than this, than a man lay down his life for a friend. We also pray that you would bless all who faithfully wear an officer's uniform today. Protect them, give them wisdom and encouragement while serving our communities. We are grateful for the opportunity to remember those who have faithfully served with their lives. Bless the remainder of this ceremony, we pray in your holy name, amen. Thank you, Chaplain Quintana. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Welcome to the 2018 Ventura County Peace Officers Memorial Service. My name is Jeremy Paris. I'm a captain with the Ventura County Sheriff's Office, and I'm president of the Peace Officers Association of Ventura County. In 1962, President John F. Kennedy designated the first Peace Officers Memorial Day. This month, services like this will be held all over the country honoring those women and men who have made the ultimate sacrifice. Today, at this place, we gather in remembrance of our heroes, our brothers and sisters, who gave their lives protecting the citizens of Ventura County. The memorial wall and these grounds are sacred to us. The 32 peace officers who, whose names are etched here in granite have, with the sacrifice of their lives, sealed in our hearts their love to us. John chapter 15, verse 13 says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. These 32 peace officers will always be remembered as our friends. We also honor the families of the fallen as we know they carry 
the heaviest burden of the loss, and we pledge our love and support to them. In 2017, we lost one of our first responder brothers. On December 4th, the Thomas Fire broke out near Santa Paula and quickly grew to be the largest wildfire in California history. Cal Fire responded to assist us. Firefighter and San Diego resident Corey Iverson was one of those who responded to our call for aid. 10 days later, engineer Corey Iverson tragically lost his life while, fire, while firefighting in the foothills near Fillmore. We express our condolences and our love to Corey's family and his brothers and sisters at Cal Fire. Our heartfelt prayers and thoughts are with you. Corey will always be considered a friend to Ventura County. Today, we're honored to have Ventura County Sheriff Jeff Dean as our guest speaker. Sheriff Dean has over 40 years of law enforcement experience and has served as our sheriff for the past eight years. Please welcome Sheriff Jeff Dean. Thank you. It's truly an honor to have been asked to share a few thoughts with you this morning. Uh, I, I want to thank all of you for coming, uh, whether you're from the law enforcement family, from the public, whether you're family or, well, I guess we really are family, whether a law enforcement family or, or, or out of it. <clears throat> it's, uh, it's a great crowd, and it's interesting as I, I came and I, I saw everybody and, and I saw the, the cycle of life that, that takes place which is why we all do our jobs to make sure that cycle of life can still take place. I saw Gabby, Gabby Aguirre in the crowd. Gabby was three years old when her father, Deputy Peter Aguirre Jr., lost his life in the line of duty while handling a domestic violence call. Today, Gabby's here with her husband, husband Albert, their son, Sammy, Peter's wife, widow Dina, is here. And it's great to see Sammy, a two-year-old, bouncing around here. He's not going to be able to stay seated because it's all of our jobs and all of our role to make sure that we can allow him to fulfill his destiny and grow and live a long, wonderful life in this beautiful country we call America. But today, not only are the young here, to lead us into the future, but we're here to honor the past. When we, leave, when we lose a loved one, not unexpectedly, it leaves us a sense of, of being alone. And so to the families that have lost a father, a mother, a sister, a brother, a son, a daughter, or a friend, I stand here representing everyone in the crowd, law enforcement professionals everywhere, all over this country to tell you we're here with you today and we will be with you tomorrow and always. As was mentioned, there's nothing that we can do to fill the gap. There's nothing we can do to fill the hole that is in your hearts. Our hearts are broken. And yet our hearts are full. Our hearts are full because of little people like Sammy they're full of hope for the future, and they're full of gratitude for the men and women whose names appear on this wall, who made the ultimate sacrifice so we could have a tomorrow. Those that made the ultimate sacrifice were fulfilling a central tenet of democracy, the tenet of freedom, the ability to live free to feel free of crime, to feel safe in our neighborhoods where we live, where we work, and, when we and where we raise our families. They represented what was in the best of us and what is in the best of America. You know, we spend a lot of time training those heroes. They're some of the best trained peace officers in the world. But their actions didn't come from the training we gave them. It came from their soul. It came from who they are. They did their job with a passion, a passion to help people. And the actions of these men and, men, men and women remind us that heroism is not only found on the fields of battle on the other side of the war, on the other side of the world, excuse me, 
where brave men and women serve every day to protect our freedom here in this great country, but also in the neighborhoods right here at home where we live. You know, when tragedy strikes us, we seek an explanation. We try to pose some order to the chaos and make some sense out of that which seems senseless. Sadly, there's evil in the world, and terrible things happen that defy human understanding. The truth is we can never really know what really triggered those actions that caused us to lose our loved ones. None of us can know with any certainty what we could have done different to prevent that tragic thing from happening. When a horrific event occurs, we're shaken from our daily routines. We look inward. We self-respect, we self-reflect. Did we spend enough time with that aging parent, we wonder? Did we express our gratitude for all the sacrifices they made for us? Did we tell a loved one just how desperately we love them? And just as that loss causes us to reflect on our past, it also causes us to reflect on our present and on our future. It causes us to reflect on the manner in which we live our lives with those that are still around us and we see every day. The selflessness of the action of the people whose name appears on these walls poses a challenge to all of us. How do we honor the fallen? And how do we be true to their memory? The answer is different for everyone. And it's something we have to find within ourselves. Are we showing kindness, generosity, compassion to the people in our lives today? Some may ask, are we doing the right thing by our children? Are we doing the right thing by our community? Some may reconsider the priorities in their own lives. While we do it, it's important that we recognize our own mortality and be reminded that not what matters during this fleeting time we have on Earth, it's not wealth, it's not power, it's not status or fame, but more importantly, it's what impact we played in making the lives of those around us better. The loss of these wonderful people should make us all strive to be better, to be better friends, to be better neighbors, to be better coworkers. You know, we could continue to weep and mourn, and we will, but I don't believe our heroes would want us to do that. I believe our heroes would want us to live our life to the fullest. As I was working through the thoughts that I would share with you today, I was I, I heard it and, and it kind of resonated with me more than usual, a song by country singer Tim McGraw. Many of you have probably heard it, Live Like You Were Dying. And then it, he talks about a man who found out that he was about to die and his self-reflection and what he went out to do, what he went out and did with his life. And I want to share a few of those phrases with you. I went skydiving. I went Rocky Mountain climbing. I went 2.7 seconds riding a bull named Fu Manchu. And all of a sudden, going fishing wasn't such an imposition. I love deeper, I spoke sweeter, and I became a friend a friend would like to have. Well, they're just words in a song. To me, they reflect on what I believe our heroes, whose names are on this wall, would want us to take forth and live our lives to the fullest. I think they would want us to make sure that we realign our priorities and our values as we continue to live our lives to the fullest. And in my mind, I think that's how we best honor our fallen and pay tribute to their memory. 
Thank you for the opportunity to share a few words with you this morning. May God bless and keep those that we've lost in restful peace. God bless our wonderful county and the United States of America. Thank you. In remembrance of our peace officers, the memorial roll call and accompanied bell ringing is a hallowed tradition. Police Chief Michael Morris of the California State University of Channel Islands Police Department will now read the memorial roll call in remembrance of our fallen heroes who gave their all in service to others. From the California Department of Justice, Special Agent Supervisor William Garvey. End of watch, September 24th, 2005. From the California Highway Patrol, Officer James H. Vandy Wegg. End of watch, July 12th, 1945. Officer Robert E. Reed, end of watch, October 8th, 1957. Officer David W. Koppelman, end of watch, April 6th, 1985. Officer James C. O'Connor, end of watch, November 15th, 1990. From the Naval Base Ventura County Police Department, Point Magoo, Officer Stan Chicana, end of watch, November 19th, 1999. From the Ojai Police Department, Constable Harry Hunt, end of watch, March 1st, 1943. From the Oxnard Police Department, Constable Andrew W. McNaughton. End of watch, March 16th, 1906. Constable W. E. Kelly. End of watch, August 20th, 1921. Officer Albert Gasparetti. End of watch, April 15th, 1956. Officer Frederick Clark. End of watch, October 12th, 1971. Officer John Adair, end of watch, October 7th, 1980. Officer James E. O'Brien, end of watch, December 2nd, 1993. Officer James R. Jensen, end of watch, March 13th, 1996. From the Santa Paula Police Department, Marshal Henry N. Norman. End of watch, November 25th, 1913. Officer James E. Barmore. End of watch, February 7th, 1953. From the Simi Valley Police Department, Officer Michael F. Clark. End of watch, August 4th, 1995. From the Ventura College Campus Police Department, Officer James Doyle, end of watch, March 23rd, 1975. From the Ventura County Sheriff's Office, Sheriff Edmund G. McMartin, end of watch, 
August 20th, 1921. Deputy Bryce Patton, end of watch, August 19th, 1960. Deputy Earl Mendenhall, end of watch, June 15th, 1961. Deputy Donald Gregory, end of watch, September 9th, 1961. Deputy Chester Chico Larson, end of watch, January 20th, 1969. Deputy Donald Haney, end of watch, June 5th, 1970. Lieutenant Harvey Hank A. Verratt, end of watch, October 20th, 1973. Sergeant Thomas K. Collins, end of watch, October 25th, 1975. Deputy Peter J. Aguirre, Jr., end of watch, July 17th, 1996. Senior Deputy Lisa D. Whitney, end of watch, August 12th, 1998. Deputy Robert Bournet, end of watch, November 6th, 2006. Deputy Yevhen Eugene Kostyachenko, end of watch, October 28th, 2014. From the Ventura Harbor Patrol, Officer Paul Douglas Corber, end of watch, March 15th, 1998. From the Ventura Police Department, Sergeant Darlin C. Dowell, End of watch, August 7th, As we conclude our memorial service today, I pray that we will never forget our friends who have sacrificed everything in service to us. On behalf of the Peace Officers Association of Ventura County, we thank all of you for attending today.